So far, it was largely the philosophers who studied human consciousness, but a serious effort to understand consciousness and walk the path towards ultimate reality was made at the MIT World Peace University in the form of the world's first conference on consciousness, the ultimate reality. Thank you uh, very much. I really appreciate and I'm humbled by the opportunity to speak amongst such uh, accomplished speaker, so I'm not sure I'm qualified. Uh, and I do applaud uh, uh, Dr. Karad as well as uh, Dr. Vijay Bhatkar for the vision to organize such an innovative and a novel and a unique uh, uh, conference. I also want to thank Dr. Deepak Ranade as well as uh, Dr. Jen Kandare, Kandare for uh, you know giving me an opportunity, but actually uh, you know, showing me the path beyond the science, beyond the technology into the spirituality. And I cannot forget uh, the little time that he took me to the up the hill on the cave, where for the first time, it was a revelation for me to see uh, Einstein, uh, the statue of Einstein and Naneshwar. So it's actually very, very, uh, you know, humbled by this opportunity. We are going to talk about a very complex topic. How does AI impact uh, human consciousness? It's very broad. It's complex. Uh, and also it's quite subjectivity. So what I thought I will do is share my own personal experience and share some three real world concrete examples of uh, how we've been able to use AI and ML uh, to impact, uh, you know, in a tiny little uh, world that uh, we've been operating in. But that is an example that can scale up and be able to, uh, you know, do that. To set that up, though, I might share a little, uh, set the context, uh, share a little bit of our journey and a bit of what we do, and then I'll share those examples. Um, and so, uh, you know, obviously, some of this, uh, uh, you know, is to set the context, uh, but. Uh, the journey has been very inspiring for me from a little village which had absolutely no technology uh, to be able to now settle in Silicon Valley. And now, you know, uh, at the age and stage in our lives, we want to go back to where we came from, uh, you know. And uh, one of the things that we really were moved by is this total cancer disease burden in a place like India where almost every minute one person, one person dies. Um, yeah, so I, I mean, where we are, um, you know, we know, you know, that uh, something has to be done. And so, uh, you know, we really, uh, thanks to again, Jayan for bringing some beautiful science and the technology together, you know, to really make an impact. Uh, you know, cancer is complex, one shoe doesn't feel all. And so, again, this is where AI and ML is implemented. And uh, the new age cutting edge science of liquid biopsy with single cell multiomics will transform the field. And the other important aspect uh, is really our methodology, what we call factor five design, you know, to make innovation for affordability work, you know, so that we can give better care. And our mission is to be able to create these new breakthrough solutions and impact at least a million cancer patients and make a societal impact. Uh, with Dr. Butker sitting in the audience, I, I don't think uh, I need to do this, but just to dumb it down, you know, the, the AI aspect and particularly machine learning, which is a subset, which has the self-learning, you know, whether unsupervised or supervised learning, right? So, uh, you know, uh, just to set the stage, uh, for, uh, you know, what is AI, how does it impact and, and being particularly uh, with the machine learning that has transformed this field quite significantly. Now, where we are applying is basically helping the, the next generation of digitization, transforming what we call data into insights. And, you know, our whole philosophy is to really help, uh, you know, the providers make critical decisions at the point of care where it is needed at their fingertips. And it's augmentation versus replacement. And this is the big debate. Is AI going to replace the oncologist? Is AI going to replace the surgeons? You know, I think, you know, we think of that as augmentation. 
an AI assisted uh, surgeon, AI assisted oncologist would outperform, you know, the, their counterparts who don't use them. Okay. And the whole idea here was transforming this field the old way. You diagnose, you treat, and you hope for a cure, you know, to uh, basically a new way where you screen, you predict, and you prevent. It's that prediction that plays significant role in AI. And early detection, you know, we know every stage of cancer, you know, 10 times more complex. And with the things that's going on with the, uh, you know, efficiency, as well as the cost reduction, uh, you know, I think certainly we are able to see the results, unprecedented speed, COVID-19 vaccine that they never, you know, had. You know, and that's why, you know, making it faster, cheaper, better, particularly that stuff. And, uh, you know, we believe that, uh, you know, cancer will become a chronic uh, disease and it will be, you know, step done. I wouldn't uh, in this audience be able to do that, but, uh, you know, my understanding is very limited. And uh, what I feel, though, is it's really, you know, what I feel and what I feel about myself and about the world around me. And it's very individual. It's unique in thoughts, memories, feelings, etc. Right. And and so that and it's continuously changing. It is contextual. Right. And so that being the case, consciousness, uh, you know, can can really be impacted by the information provided to you, uh, you know, in order to be able to make the decisions, you know, and, and, and much more than I can explain. Right. So so what we you know, feel very, very strongly is that if AI is that transforming agent that gives you easy access to information that will influence and will impact the consciousness. Uh, 